Hello everybody, my name is Multi and welcome to my channel. Today I am here with the R-WB30. Um, so in the game, this is this would be uh, referred to as the Rortus Wide Body 30, Rortus being the game developer, and um, it has been uh, made known unto me that this plane is modeled after the A330. Um, of course, Rortus, the developer of the company uh, or of the game, cannot uh, specifically copy any plane due to copyright issues. That's what we're going to be calling this plane, the A330. And I have a Japan flight for you guys. I have been getting a lot of requests in the comments to do flights in Japan, and um, a lot of requests to do flights in Tokyo. Um, now, I will make a separate video of an A330 flight out of Tokyo to some other major city, but we are actually going to be doing a domestic uh, Japanese flight, sort of. So I'll show you guys the map. Um, I'll take you over to the flight simulator panel and we'll see what we're going to do. So, we have two offshore uh, airports that we're going to be flying in Japan, so centrally, central Japan basically. Um, we're going to be going from Chubu Centrara Airport, so as you can see here, so that's RJ, uh, RJGG, I think in Japanese, um, in the Japanese system. Um, here we have Kansi Airport, which was actually the very first offshore island in Japan to be made. Um, and it's also my favorite airport in the game. Um, my, it is my favorite airport in the whole game, and there are some really cool challenges that Rortus has set up for us to do there um, in the campaign. But, as you can see, it's going to be a short flight over this, this big peninsula sort of area that sticks out, um, and both are offshore islands, um, and they're also man-made, so it's, it's a very cool thing. And uh, I'll show you guys around a little bit. We've got a low failure rate, um, an aircraft we're going to do passengers halfway, um, load, well, if we're going to have passengers, we're going to have, let's have some seriously pack happy passengers, all right, weather, time, all's good, and we're going to be doing this whole video in the cockpit, um, so, uh, I want to show you guys around a little bit first, as you can see, we are on a man-made island here, um, and this was the second actually to be built in Japan, that I learned, um, and it's 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 a very very nice airport, and I, I like it a lot. So we're gonna take off, and I'll tell you guys a little bit more about the airports once we're in the air. Uh, we've got some pretty heavy winds. 17 knots is not something to be trifled with, and especially with some vaults. So we're gonna be careful. Gonna get in the cockpit, as you can see. I've yet to do a flight simulator walkthrough for this plane, and this is not a flight simulator walkthrough. This is just sort of a flight in Japan. Uh, because I found some cool airports um, that I that I know of myself, and I thought you guys would enjoy. But um, we're going to be spending this in the cockpit uh, just to look around and to get a feel for this new plane because it is rather recent. So engines, we're going to fire them up. So I am using keyboard commands as I'm on a on a PC right now. All right. So as you can see, those are the keyboard commands. But I go through the, that in a keyboard tutorial if you're interested. On my channel, you'll be able to find that. Um, and yeah, we've got the direction we'll be going. We're, it looks like we're going to be going, um, I don't know whether this is relative. As you can see, I'll show you guys the map. We're going to be going basically, basically west, southwest. Um, and, uh, yeah, we're going to do this. So, we're going to take off, and then we're going to fly to Kansi. We're going to land, and we're going to actually taxi, uh, to a terminal, because I know that that airport has terminals, which is sort of nice. So, uh, flaps to halfway. Let's see here. All right, flaps are halfway. Just trust me on it. There they are. Um, it all seems to be well. Check everything. I, we might as well do a flaps test. Um, and I'll go external for that. So, do 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 do. Okay, good deal. Rudder, it's all good. All right, we're set. And in the cockpit, we're gonna go up to here um, at cruising cruising speed basically uh, but I basically always max it out I know that's not the, what you're supposed to do but uh, I pretty much always max out the throttle it is an arcade game it's not really a simulator don't tell Rortus I said that um, I really wish that sometime in the future we could like uh, we could actually interact with the things on the screen here we're already getting closer and closer to that alright full speed we're all getting closer and closer to that. As you can see, we can see the 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 uh, engine throttles there, and they do move when you when you mess with them. We're just making our way down the runway. 
this plane takes off at a really low speed. Though I, I think I tried to pull up a little faster than I should have. Woo! There we go. Whoa! We're bouncing! Alright. Back down. <laughs> we're gonna gain a little more speed. And then try to take off. There we go. We're off the ground. Though, uh, it does appear that we're... Yeah, we're getting off the ground. Okay, that was a bit of a odd takeoff. I guess our flaps were down too far. Very strange. Okay, flaps are up. And we're going to start moving in the direction that we need to be going. Gears going up. And we can tell right here, um, as, and also right here, our set direction. We are also going to have to think about the wind, um, but usually autopilot compensates for wind pretty well. We're going to do a cruising altitude of about 5,000 feet. Um, well, let's see. I'm not sure how far. It's about 80 nautical miles. That's not bad. 5,000 feet is not as high up as you probably should go for a flight like that. Hit time. Whoa, adjust the speed a little bit. Adjust the direction. Here. Okay, as you can see, the wind's like knocking us all over the place. We're going to increase actually to 10,000. As you can see. And we're just going to let the plane do that. Um, so here we are in our plane. And autopilot is, should be dealing with this for us. What in the world are you doing, autopilot? Oh, yeah. It's trying to keep the speed consistent. That's weird. Yeah, just full full, full speed it. And do four, 249. An altitude of 10,000. And it should stay. Well, now we're going to leave. And I can't move the plane anymore. Good. All right. So... Here we are, in our amazing A330, um, and it's got pink seats, which is a little weird, and I really don't even want to know what that spot's there for. Um, looks like nobody, somebody, <laughs> looks like a shadow for a, for a seatbelt that's not there. I wonder what happened. <laughs> maybe, maybe it's been used once or twice, the seatbelt. Um, whoa, we're going to be going through a, a cloud here. That's kind of cool. Um, oh yeah, but about this airport. So again, it was the third developed airport, um, like offshore airport in Japan. Um, so that means it was built on a man-made island. And what's interesting is that it was actually the second built. So uh, it got built before the whatever the second developed uh, airport was. But um, yeah, and it, it definitely uh, was modeled after Kansi Airport, as Kansi was the first to be um, developed as well as... Uh, as built, but um, there's not as much to say about this one as there is uh, Kansi Airport, which is the one we're going to. Um, it is notable, I think this airport opened in 2005? Um, either that or... Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it opened in 2005. I, I'm checking my sources here. Yeah, and it, uh, 2005. Um, it started development probably five to six years previously. Um, and uh, it also does cargo flights, which is interesting. Um, so I wouldn't have a problem taking the the fat the fat Russian plane off off from there. But um, let's see where we are on the map. Good, we're making our way over. Sweet. All right, we're gonna speed up time a little bit and then finish our approach over there. And I'll tell you a little bit about Kansi, what I know. Um, whoa, oh, okay, stop, 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 stop. All right, which engine is it? Ah, I'm panicking. Okay, throttle down. Chill, chill. Oh, autopilot's on. Shoot. Turn autopilot off. Switch. Down. Woo! That was close. Dang, I was not ready for that. Okay, so that was one of our faults, is that one of our engines pooped out on us right now. Okay, autopilot's good. That stuff's not going to be a problem. Okay, we lost an engine. We're decreasing in speed. But, on the bright side, the A330 can run on one engine just fine. So we don't have much to worry about, except we're going to get there a lot slower. We also really just got to keep an eye. We've got the engine at idle right now. 
be honest, at this oil pressure, there's not much we can do for it. Um, we can push it a little bit. Let's see. I'll push it a little bit. Yeah, I know. It's still decreasing in oil pressure. Yeah, we, we butchered it. If, if, maybe, if I had reacted a little sooner, we might have be able, been able to save it, but... Watching it. Yeah, it's going down. It's going to blow up. All right, we're going to actually... Hmm... I'm going to actually turn the engine off, um, just so we don't risk it. It's not ri it's not worth risking it blowing up, but we also don't want to extinguish it, because that would, uh, that would just ruin the engine. It, it would put out the fire, yeah, but it would also ruin the engine. So, uh, alright. And now we can, we can, we can full throttle again. Um, because, see here? Yeah, because the engine's off, so there's nothing to worry about. Okay, so that was a good thing I caught that, or I heard it. I know what it sounds like, so um, if, for those of you who have no idea how I figured it out, that what was happening, um, I could hear the engine getting louder and louder and, and crazier and crazier, and I knew that, um, I know that sound in Extreme Landings. Another important thing um, is that that probably messed my response time up here. We're going to, whoa, hit time. Ah. All right, we're gonna be, we're gonna slow down a little bit. Something that messed up my response time. We're gonna bring this down to three thousand feet. Gosh, it's been so long since I played Extreme Landings. I'm sorry, everybody. Three thousand. All right, so we're, our planes. We're gonna start our descent. Whoa. Um. Yeah. But uh, Ken's another thing that probably messed up my response time was the fact that I have one of my I, I'm listening to of course extreme landings in stereo which mean I means I've got sound coming from both sides um, and the engine that messed up was on this side of the plane here and unfortunately this side of the plane is the the headset I've got that ear off right now so I can hear myself talk um, so yeah that that's a that's a bit of an important thing to be aware of is that you can't really hear this side if you have that off. Now we're going to be seeing water down there soon, which means we are actually fast approaching the airport. We're going to do a little bit of a circle um, just to get down to the right altitude because we are definitely not right now. Um, but we should be able to see the airport pretty soon. I think that might be it, actually, up there. Kenzie International Airport, if you guys um, don't know, was the first... Um, yeah, see, we're, we're, our altitude is we're just way too high up to make a correct approach, so we're going to have to go around a little bit. But it was the very first man-made island um, that uh, was made in Japan for a... Uh, specifically for an airplane to land on. Um... Yeah, we're still decreasing in altitude. Well, we should probably actually, though, let's move. Because if there were other flights, we would they wouldn't want us, like, messing with them. So we're actually going to turn this way and go for a... We're going to go for a little bit of a ride here. Go to about 60. Okay. So, um, the idea was proposed. It was to... I think it was to... So I think Kenzi is near the city of like Osaka or something like that. Um, it's in, I know it's in Osaka Bay, and it's near the city. It was originally built to like relieve the relieve the density of the population density, not population, but traffic density of the um, Osaka International Airport. Um, and in the I think it ended up taking almost all, it almost ended up taking all of their uh, their flights. And so now this is the International Airport in Osaka. Um, which used to be International Airport, is now just handles domestic flights. Because, of course, um, older airports are usually built um, for smaller planes, and since uh, there, you know, so many, so many people fly now, and airports have gotten bigger and bigger, some of the older airports that were once considered big have now uh, shrunk, and it's not very easy to extend airports that are in the middle of cities. Um, I remember hearing uh, that... It, it was like, I think, to make this man-made island, you needed a lot of stone, right? And so, I think, um, I think three mountains were excavated to, uh, to basically, to put this down. And also, I've got some facts over here on my computer, on my Mac. 
Um, so we, let me see if I can find that actually, because I've I've read this I've read this site before. Um, construction, yeah, okay. So basically, okay, yeah, another thing. So the bay is not very deep. However, it's got so much sediment, loose sediment uh, underneath it. It actually holds like 75% of the water in the bay is actually in the sediment. And you can't build a foundation on that. So basically what they did was um, they, they put like a million sea drains or like sand drains in there to solidify the, the con or to solidify the clay sediment underneath it so that they could then put the three mountains worth of rock and like I don't know dirt substance to to make that man-made island, and uh, it's a it's a really really cool thing. All right, whoops, that's the wrong thing. Two forty three. So that's why it's one of my favorite favorite airports. Also, I've done a lot of fun things with extreme landings, um, with extreme landings on this airport, such as uh, fly try to fly the seven fifty seven through the pillars of the bridge. You can also land on the bridge. Um, that connects uh, this airport to the mainland. Um, another interesting thing, there's, there's like a boat docked there and some um, some skyscrapers. All right, so we're pretty pretty well lined up with the runway actually. We're gonna take the, uh, the runway on the left um, because I think it's easier to taxi from there. Um, so I gotta just sort of make sure I know where we are and what, what's going on. Um, see yeah okay fact fun fact about Kenzie International Airport it was it opened on the 4th of December 1994 cool but it's been it's been deeply in debt apparently 560 million lost in profit every year that's not good so not the most profitable airport um, it may be now but uh, at least when it opened, it was in a bad state. All right, so let's see. Where exactly are we? It says our distance is 14. It doesn't say we're getting any closer. What in the world? Oh, we're off. All right, autopilot's not working for us anymore. We gotta fly manually. There it is. Stop it, autopilot. Stop, stop. All right. I got control now. So we're going to be taking this airport here. We can barely see it, and we got a lot of uh, of wind. Another thing that we need to remember, whoa, that's the wrong, I don't know, the rudder's all messed up. All right, here's the bridge up ahead. You can see the bridge that you can land on. Sorry, the wind is just like blowing this thing all over the place. Turn on the APU, because why not, right? The APU gives you control of the plane when all of your engines are off. We've got one engine off, so I think that's a little... I guess it's justifiable. All right, Kenzie International Airport. I'm probably pronouncing it wrong as well, but I'm doing the best I can being the American. All right, um, we're gonna put flaps. I I'm hesitant to put flaps down, actually. We're coming in way too hot, actually, whoa, boy. All right, yeah, flaps are going down. We have a long runway, though, which is nice. Okay, we're actually supposed to line up with that, but that's okay, woo! <laughs> Gear down. So that was a proximity award alert. <laughs> award. Telling us that we were too close. Whoa, this wind. Oh my gosh. Whoa. 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 Okay. Wait, I don't know what happened. Uh, and frankly, I'm afraid to look. The wind got way stronger once we got closer to the ground. There's a boat. Um, I guess... We might... All right, here, let's look at the landing. Oh, look, landing gear seems to be fine. Um, let's just take a look at outside of the plane. Yeah, the wind just went nuts. Um, maybe turning on the APU wasn't the best idea. Okay, let's take a look at our gear. Uh... Huh. <laughs> the gear's gone, guys! The gear's gone! Okay, we're gonna try ourselves a little miracle on the Hudson. All right, now that's that was not expected. Okay, so we don't have gear. We're gonna put that up. Now, a lot of you guys consider this game re like 100% reality. It's not. 
this game is not very realistic. Um, definitely not very realistic. And uh, in real life, there's actually a fighting chance to actually land on the water and be okay. Land a plane on the water and be okay. Um, I don't know what this plane's stalling speed is. But I'm going, to, d despite knowing that touching the water in this game makes your plane just crash and wreck into pieces, I'm going to give it a go. Um, so, yeah. Okay. And so we've got to land on our belly. I guess we can give it a go. On We, we might actually have a fighting chance on, on, on the concrete, but I still think we're going to try it on the water. Yeah, the water's all blue wool. Sorry, that's what I call uh, it in, in uh, Minecraft, blue wool. Alright. So, we're going to try and land this. I'm going to look at my meter here. So my speed flaps are all the way down. Stalling speed is 160. We are dropping. Okay, we got to be at the... Okay, we're at 94 feet. Getting closer, getting closer. 94. Okay, full speed down again. Okay, decreasing in altitude. Decreasing, decreasing, decreasing. Up a little bit. We're going to try and make this as smooth as possible. <laughs> and no explosion. Wonderful. That means people might have survived. Might have. Regardless, <laughs> we did not land that successfully. However, we are going to still do the landing for the flight. Okay, everybody, so we are now making our approach to uh, Kenzie International Airport. We are uh, trying, giving this another go, this landing, since it did not go too wonderfully last time. I am not a certified pilot. I, I, I apologize for that. And um, the wind got really screwy when we made our way down there, um, when we lost the gear last time. But we're going to be giving this a go, and we're going to actually try and land this domestic flight um, as if that last bit hap never happened. Now... Um, I do believe that the plane wouldn't have broken in pieces if that were real water. I believe that um, I actually might have been able to save that and actually the plane would have been okay and everyone would have evacuated easily and quickly, um, like the the miracle on the Hudson as everybody knows about 2009. Um, however, that was not the case in this video game because if you touch water in this video game, stuff goes very badly for you. So we're going to put flaps all the way back, gear down. We're going to try and land at around 120 knots. We're coming in, again, way faster than we should. But um, that's okay. Okay, wind's going to start getting all crazy like it was before. But we're going to be able to handle it this time. Flying very slow. We're going to land at 150 knots, which is insane. But, all right. Oof. We got this. We got this. And touchdown. All right, we're down. And now we're going to maintain a taxi speed of 50 knots. I know that sounds insane to you guys, but um, I've tried taxiing in videos before and it cuts me off. Um, because if you go under like 20 knots or something like that, the game thinks that you've successfully completed the landing and decides you're done. Um, and we actually want to taxi to a terminal, so we don't want that to happen. So we're going to actually try and maintain our taxi speed. So as you can see, here's the bridge um, that you can that you can land on actually in Extreme Landings. It's very cool, and I will be making a video shortly, um, I think, of trying to land the A3 380 on that. If you're watching this video in the future and you search up on my channel and you see that there is not a video of landing the A380 on that bridge, the bridge of um, of Kensey Airport, International Airport, then yell at me in the comments, say make a video. And if you're watching this in the next couple of days, well then, yeah, I, I probably haven't done it yet, but still, do it. <laughs> Yell at me in the comments for not doing it, and I'll do it. Okay, just gonna get a little closer to the taxiways here. It's a lot harder to maintain speed on the areas that aren't light gray like this. So we're gonna try to stay on the light gray areas as best we can. And, um... Once we're trying to get like close enough to taxiway, if it stops us, because the game just does that sometimes, if it stops us, then that's alright. Um, usually I keep the throttle around teeth, but um, 30 knots is a pretty good taxi speed, I suppose, and it won't get, won't get us stopped. I'm also going to, alright, uh, we're going to turn right here. 
We're going pretty fast, but if we slow down, then we're screwed. So I'm actually going to leave the cockpit view now so I can see what's going on. Because uh, I don't want to hit my wing or anything. We're going to try to line ourselves up with one of these gates. This one right here. Speeding up a little bit, and there we go. Good enough. We have done it, guys. We have landed at Kenzie International Airport. It took us a couple tries, but we actually managed to do it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, and <laughs> please let me know what I could do better. Um, I, I left, I decided to leave the, the crash and the loss of landing gear in because I thought you guys would think it's funny. Um, and enjoy that crazy attempt at a landing on the water. Again, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and say goodbye to our wonderful A330. Bye-bye.